Hello everyone, welcome to the inaugural Kubernetes Community Day Africa. I hope you are enjoying the event so far. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Rafael Natali, and I will be talking about Kubernetes, Ansible, Automation, Infrastructure as Code, and how all they work together. A little bit about myself. I am currently a senior DevOps engineer at Marionette Consulting. I have been working with cloud and DevOps for about five years now uh, across different industries and geographies. Before that, I was a system administrator working mainly with middleware technologies. Also, I am an AWS and GCP certified professional. And more relevant for today's topic, I am a certified Kubernetes administrator. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code is an intrinsic part of the DevOps culture and best practices. The goal is to guarantee configuration consistency and traceability across environments. There are a plethora of tools that can help us to code our infrastructure. Ansible is one of the most well-known automation tools in the DevOps space. It's a simple and powerful tool that we're going to be using today for provision or Kubernetes cluster on Google Cloud. Okay, so uh, the first step uh, to have our code up and running is to create a couple of folders for our Ansible. I will create just an Ansible folder and a couple of subfolders, inventory and rows. Okay. Uh, inside of the inventory folder, I uh, will create what we call inventory file. Uh, in our case today, the inventory file will have the declaration of all the variables that we are going to be using uh, through our code. Uh, I have a section here for GCP related information where I define my zone, my region, I will define my project ID, my service accounts, and also a section where I will be defining some variables for our Kubernetes cluster. So for example, the name, I can say KCD Africa, uh, and the number of nodes. Let's create a cluster with three nodes. Uh, with 100 gigabytes of disk, uh, solid state, and machine type N1 standard 2. Okay, those are the variables that we are going to be using uh, throughout. We'll see uh, when we start to go with the rows where we're going to be using that. Okay, so as for the inventory file, I will be using uh, a file that I created beforehand, uh, just for security reasons, uh, I will not be showing here, but has the, the same variables that I show uh, in the example before. Okay, uh, after the inventory file, we are going to be using the rows, uh, the Ansible rows to configure the Ansible tasks uh, to provision our cluster. Uh, rows are basically a set of instructions, also known as tasks, uh, that Ansible you, will execute uh, in the specific order to achieve the desired state. Uh, it will be clear uh, when we start to code it. Okay, uh, so the first row uh, I'm going to be create is a row that will create a GCP network, a VPC uh, in my project. Uh, so I create uh, a folder called network inside of the folders, uh, the folder rows, sorry, uh, and a tasks. Okay, so. I don't want to use the default network of my GCP project uh, to host my Kubernetes cluster. In that case, I am first creating a specific GCP network, okay? Uh, the tasks is just a YAML file that should, must actually uh, exist inside of the tasks folder. Name should be uh, main. .yaml. Okay. So, uh, in this task, I just have a name for the task, 
uh, create GCP network. And here I declare the module that the Ansible module that we are going to be using. Uh, the Ansible module, as we can see here in the documentation, uh, is a piece of code uh, that Ansible uses to know what to do when connect to GCP. Uh, so here we can see in the documentation all the parameters that I can use uh, in, case, in the case for the network. Uh, we have an example, which is pretty much the same uh, that we're using here, uh, and all the return values. So when we create the GCP network, we can return, we can register this in a variable, for example, uh, the name as we are going to see here in, in the row. Okay, so the module is a piece of code that uh, Ansible knows what to do in the GCP. Uh, I will come back to, uh, to the roles, to the tasks uh, later on. Uh, before that, I will just create another row uh, for Kubernetes cluster okay create a row the same as I did before I just create another folder Kubernetes and create a tasks uh, inside of these tasks I will create another main.yaml and now I will have two Ansible modules okay so in order to create uh, a Kubernetes cluster in GCP, I need to use two Ansible modules. I need to use the Google Cloud GCP container cluster. And after, I need to use the Google Cloud GCP container node pool to create the node pool inside of the Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Again, I will come back this later when the cluster is is creating uh, and the last step is to create a ansible playbook inside of the ansible folder here i will create a file called create kubernetes uh, yaml again another yaml file uh, and the playbook. Uh, the Ansible playbook uh, is created, uh, is a file that we create to execute the roles, uh, is uh, an ordered list of tasks, or in that case, in that case roles, uh, that we use to execute the same code uh, every time, the same way, the same manner. Uh, it's important to highlight that as I mentioned, is an ordered list. So when I declare here the rows, I will first create the network and then I will create the Kubernetes cluster because I need the network created first uh, and then create the Kubernetes because the Kubernetes exists inside of this network. Okay. So now we use the ansible playbook command to execute this playbook and the playbook will call uh, the two rows the network and the kubernetes rows and will execute all the steps so as we can see here it start the play create infra which is this one it Ansible find uh, the rows and it finds that first row is the network. Okay, so the network, the network is in here, network tasks main.yaml. So Ansible knows that it needs to use this Ansible module, the Google Cloud GCP compute network to create uh, the network. Uh, so it will use uh, the name network dash cluster name 
we can see here this is a Jinja2 type of variable and I replace this value cluster name with the name uh, of the cluster name that I specified previously in the inventory file. Remember, I put KCD Africa. So uh, Ansible will ask GCP to create a network called network-kcd-africa. Uh, it will create all the sub-networks automatically because I said this to true. Uh, in the project ID, project ID again, Jinja2 type, it's going to replace uh, with the project ID that I specify in the inventory file with the credential file again, that I use in the uh, inventory file. Okay, uh, the state, the state for this task is to be present, which means that I'm telling Ansible that whenever it runs, it needs to ensure that the network exists. Okay, so for now, I already run the first time, it changed it, which means that it already created. We can see here in the GCP console. See, already created with all the subnetworks. So that's why it's changed. Okay, because previously it doesn't exist and now it exists. If for whatever reason uh, this network is removed, is deleted, and we run this uh, Ansible again, it will recreate, okay? And if we run the Ansible again, and the Ansible see that the network already exists, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't recreate or delete or do anything. It just say, okay, the, the state is present, so I, I'm okay with that. Uh, in this, using this keyword register, I am registering all the outcomes uh, of the, this module. Remember when I show you guys the return values here in the documentation? So all these values, how to create a subnetwork, description, name, all of this is registered in this variable. Okay. And this is important because when I am creating the Kubernetes cluster, I use this, okay? Now, as we can see here in the playbook, it is running the task of the row Kubernetes and the task Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster, which is this first one, which use this container, this module. Uh, the Google Cloud GCP container cluster. Again, the same in the documentation. It creates the cluster, the very first part of the, the cluster. There are several, all the parameters that we can specify through the console, we can specify here. Okay, as you can see, a lot of things. Uh, so what I did here, I used the name, which is the same name that I specify in the inventory file, the KCD Africa, uh, the number of nodes that I want, this tree, uh, the location is the zone, uh, Europe West 2 in my case. Uh, here is the important part, is the different part, uh, network. Which network I'm going to create uh, the Kubernetes cluster? I don't want to create in the default one. I want to create in the one that I created before. So that's why I registered here. I use the variable network with the return value name to create this Kubernetes cluster. So I associating my Kubernetes cluster with my network. If I don't specify anything, it will create in the default network, but I don't want that. Uh, my project ID uh, is coming from uh, the inventory file. I'm authenticating using the service account again that I specify in the inventory file. Uh, the state is present. So if forever, if for any reason uh, this cluster is deleted, when I rerun this Ansible, it will create 
or if I run in a project ID uh, that doesn't, or in a zone or a network that doesn't have this cluster, it will create. Okay. To remove, we just need to create another uh, row with another playbook uh, and change this to absent. So if it exists, it will change the status, uh, the state from present to absent. It will remove. OK. So this is the first part. Let's jump to the console and see what's, what is happening in our Kubernetes cluster console. OK, you see that we have a cluster, we name it KCD Africa. Uh, in Europe West 2C with all the information here uh, for the network, you see, uh, is created in the network that we specified previously. That's great. Now, the second part is the notebook. So this, this module only creates uh, the cluster, but doesn't have any nodes. That's why we need uh, the second module, uh, the Google Cloud GCP Container Node Pool. Again, I'm specifying a name. Let's just jump for the documentation, just for you guys to see again. Uh, mm -hmm. In the same way, there are several parameters you can specify. I just choose uh, a couple ones for this presentation for simplicity. Uh, so the name is node pool and the cluster name. Uh, the initial node count is the same that is specified before. Uh, and the cluster, which cluster I am going to associate my node pool. I'm going to associate with the cluster that I create in the step before the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, and I will create with uh, the disk size of 100 gigabytes, SSD, uh, the machine, uh, and one standard two, and again, present. So I, I want this to be present. Okay, so we can see uh, here in the terminal that it already run, so it already created the Kubernetes cluster, it already creates the Kubernetes node pool. So three are OK, three are changed. So if we go to the Kubernetes cluster engine, we can see the node is here. It's created. It has all the three nodes. Uh, for those who don't know, these nodes are nothing else than three compute engines instance that GCP creates automatically for us. We don't need to, to worry about that. See? Those are the three nodes of my Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Now, just to show you what happens if I run this Ansible playbook again. Now, all the resources that we want already exist. So I don't want Ansible to do anything. You see? So when we rerun this with uh, this information, and Ansible checks that everything already exists in GCP, you just say, OK, OK, OK. So everything is OK, because all these states are true. So I have a cluster, I have the node pool, I have the network. So everything is OK. Uh, Ansible doesn't need to do any change uh, in the environment. OK, and now. Just to show how do we connect, I will just increase a little bit my screen uh, and 
how do we if you go here in the cluster i will just connect i will copy uh, the gcloud command to connect with my cluster i copy here paste okay my kube config uh, was configured and now i can just oops kubectl uh, get notes and here they are uh, the same three nodes that we saw in the console before. Um, if I do kubectl get namespaces, I can see all the default uh, namespaces. Get pods and dash n. Uh, system. Do we have anything in the kube system running? Oh, we have. Great. That's good. That's good. From this point on, you can manage the Kubernetes cluster with kubectl, no problems at all. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show uh, to you today. Uh, this presentation was just to demonstrate uh, the use of infrastructure as code uh, to install, set up, and configure uh, a simple uh, Kubernetes cluster on Google Cloud Platform and also to show some essential concepts uh, of, from Ansible, like roles and playbooks, uh, and how to configure and structure them uh, to provision resources in the cloud. Much, much more is possible with Ansible, GCP, Kubernetes, obviously. Uh, this is just a starting point uh, to you be able to organize your Kubernetes configuration, uh, such as namespace deployments and, and policies uh, as code. Okay, so thank you very much for being with me today uh, and continue enjoying uh, the Kubernetes Community Africa. Uh, bye.